Uh, this is the mini film, mini preview film festival. I'm your host, Tim Cowley, and I've been hosting this festival the last couple of years. It's been a really awesome opportunity to, to chat with filmmakers and see what they've been producing over the last year or two, and then to try to get that in front of the hearts and minds of those of us who are doing cross-cultural ministry. We have a good lineup for you guys today. Uh, so we have animations. This is our first lineup of animations. We have Can the Bible Be Trusted, which is part of the Wonder Series by Jesus Film Project. And then we have a second Jesus Film Project called Chosen Witness, which just came out. Then we have uh, Tom's going to be representing Rock International with For This Reason. And then uh, SIL International Media Services is here to talk about and show ScriptFit, a portion of ScriptFit, which is an animation program that they were able to do completely online. So this is a good example of what we might be able to do, even if we're not professional animators. Uh, and then Amazing Stories is a series from Good News Productions International. And we have something called Bedtime Stories, which is a little animation done in Bahasa, Indonesian. And then TWR Motion has uh, The Crucifixion, which is not brand new, but it's something where they've got it now into uh, standard Arabic modern standard Arabic. And so we want to be able to show that off so you can know about that 20 part series. That's a creation to Christ animation style. So the way this is going to work is we're going to show you this slide like this, and then I will show the film. Uh, all of the films are anywhere from one minute to maybe five or six minutes. Uh, so a lot of them are just going to be trailers or they are going to be uh, sections that I grabbed from a film to give that look and feel. But sometimes, this, most, of the, most cases, this won't be the entire film. Have you ever wondered why followers of Jesus believe the Bible is the same today as when it was originally written? The Bible is God's holy book, written over a span of 1,500 years. It is actually a library of books that teach us about God and his moral standards for all people. It includes the Torah, the Psalms, the Injil, and letters to followers of Jesus. It tells us about our part of the story as God's creation. Some people think the Bible has changed over the years, due in large part to the multitude of translations that exist. The Bible was originally written in three languages and has since been translated numerous times so everyone can read the Word of God in their own language. Some languages even have multiple translations, but they all hold the same message. Every copy of the Bible is a translation of the original texts and can be checked against them. A myriad of archaeological evidence validates modern translations. For example, 981 ancient Bible manuscripts composed between the 3rd century BC and the 1st century AD were discovered near the Dead Sea during the mid-20th century. One of these manuscripts is the Great Isaiah Scroll. It includes all 66 chapters of the Book of Isaiah, a book that prophesied about the life and death of Jesus Christ. The Great Isaiah Scroll is the same as the Book of Isaiah in the modern Bible. The portion of the Bible that tells us about Jesus was composed by his disciples, who lived during his lifetime in the first century. They sent their writings to multiple regions where other disciples affirmed the truth of what was written, copied it, and sent it to more followers of Jesus. More than 25,000 copies of ancient Bible manuscripts that tell of Jesus have been recovered, all of which match one another and are the same as the modern Bible. There's even a complete Bible written in Greek on display in the British Library. This Bible, the Codex Sinaiticus, is dated around 350 AD and is exactly the same as the modern Bible. The Bible has the most recovered copies of any ancient text. Altogether, the evidence proves today's Bible consists of the same scriptures originally written thousands of years ago.
turn around. You're not wanted here. Mary. <sighs> Evil spirits. Come out of this woman. She's dead. Mary, daughter of Abraham. From that day on, I became his follower. I wanted to do what pleased God. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and other outcasts? People who are well do not need a doctor, but only those who are sick. I have not come to call respectable people to repent, but outcasts. witness is available in 38 languages on the jesus film website our app and youtube channel it just came out uh last week and it is part we eventually hope to have a full length feature of the jesus film in animation like this so this is the similar style jesus as uh legion um we did 3d modeling so we have the same character and we're going to be making more of these short uh Jesus film stories, and then hopefully we can put them all together in one long piece. So that's our goal. It's all based on um, Jesus film audio tracks. So it's already translated. We just have to slap on, you know, sync the language, uh, the voiceover with uh, the video. Um, I'm pretty sure it's available in Indonesian, but I'll have to check. So it's on our website, it's on our app, and then it's on our YouTube channel. So you can see any of those um, for Chosen Witness. Wonder Series is another animation. You know, animation's been really popular since we've had to shut down live production for the last year. So we have four episodes in the series currently. There's going to be eight total. The next four will be uh, by the end of December. There are commonly asked questions that people from, that are in background people um, ask. Uh, we developed it for Central Asia. So you'll see a lot of the languages that we're working on right now are for Central Asia. Um, so we have it in uh, Farsi slash Persian, uh, Kazakh, Russian, Central Asian, Russian, Turkish, Arabic, and Turkmen, I'm hoping to get up in the next week or two. Um, if for some reason you really need Arabic right now, um, or Turkmen right now, feel free to um, email me and I'll, I'll get those languages. We're, we're working on getting all of them translated. And um, the next, so there's uh, God's Rescue Plan, which is uh, a gospel presentation. The Bible can be trusted. Who is Jesus really, and um, why did Jesus have to die? So I think our our two most popular are this one that uh, they showed today, and why did Jesus have to die? Next up is for this reason. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is his story. Hello, everyone. Yeah, 
yeah, we uh, with Rock, we've had our movie called King of Glory, which was uh, just shy of four hours of a chronological dot connecting kind of thing. And uh, so what we decided is we wanted to have a one sitting normal setup for a movie. And so we produced the For This Reason, but we wanted to make sure that we could uh, take all the 41 languages along with us. So everything in the audio from the King of Glory was brought across. And so we made sure that everything was just in the same thing. We came up with a few more animated scenes to connect it in a different way. Uh, coming around for that thought of um, what is truth and for this reason I was born. And so uh, starting there, uh, we wanted to try to make it in one sense for a Christmas movie. Uh, with all the Christmas movies out there, you wonder uh, what's, what's out there for really presenting uh, Christ. And so we kind of uh, have that flavor. But at the same time, it's really a movie for all seasons. And so uh, Easter time, we were trying to utilize that in churches and, and uh, even some uh, theaters that would take and put it out. And so, um, but uh, so today we have three languages, English, Spanish, and Wolof for Senegal. Uh, but all the other languages are being worked on to bring over the audio portions into that. Okay, next up is script fit. And this isn't something you're going to want to take and necessarily dub into another language, but it's a really uh, useful way for us to see how cloud-based animation software is now uh, pretty readily accessible. And so the International Media Service of SIL put this together and they will give us a few um, comments about that after we watch this clip from this episode. So you want to dub a video. That's great. Well, the first thing you're going to need to do is form a team. Well, not that type of team. Our team's made up of a translator, consultant, project manager, mother tongue speakers, and an IMS certified media specialist. Now that you have a team, go ahead and choose a video project. Will your project be a single voice narration or a multi voice dramatization? After choosing your video, contact IMS to get the cultural evaluation and script preparation video. We'll send that to you electronically. Make your recording arrangements with your voices and your equipment. Now you're ready to dub the video, right? Right? Wrong. Not yet. So far, you've gotten the first four steps down. The next step, script preparation, begins now, even now, while you are still months away from dubbing. The translation and preparation of the script is the most important part of the project. Yes, I'm going to pass it over to Mike Haas, who was the, uh, well, first Julie was the, the genesis of the idea, and then Mike Haas was the one who made it happen. It was meant to be uh, like an infomercial style uh, to get people's attention. This is the first of two videos. The first one is to convince you that you don't know how to script it, and you need to watch the second video and learn how. As you guys are putting this together, I was like, we actually need this because we've been dealing with this in our organization. And so thank you. I'm going to actually watch this to be a consumer. Plus, I've had to make some of these animation videos, and I'm always wondering what is the best way to do this. So really glad you guys are giving us an example. Um, Mike, take it. When, when, we, when we started this out, we were uh, I had been playing around with this uh, animation video from Vyond, V-Y-O-N-D. It used to be called Go Animate. There's, tons of online uh, video uh, animation programs out there. This is just one of them. Toonly is another. Whatever suits you, um, go to the internet and find out what you like for your style. But uh, they're very easy. They give you all the assets. They give you the music. They give you the sound effects. I had to go out and get my own several times and create my own. That's no problem. And you just overlay these things. You can even play videos within the animation. So it's a lot of fun. It takes about three to four months to learn and about a year to get really into it and understand how this all works. So it's a lot of fun. And what we love about this is that you can take a boring video for training and make it exciting and fun and colorful. And, uh, and it also helps you synthesize in your own mind what are the major salient points of this particular training or viewers to, to learn and listen to. So it, it, um, it's great for training. And we do a lot of that here at IMS. 
And we're excited uh, that this is just the beginning and would love to answer any questions or uh, point you to places that might help you uh, further your own training ideas or promotional. These are great for promotional videos. And again, you can create humor, you can do all sorts of things with them. Um, just enjoy doing it and your people will enjoy watching it. This is a, a series called Amazing Stories. And we're gonna be watching Bedtime Stories, which is in Bahasa Indonesian with English subtitles right now. And that's from Good News Productions International. Ayo anak-anak, sudah saatnya kalian tidur. Baik bu, tapi ceritain dulu ya. Aduh, itu lagi, itu lagi. Kapan kalian akan bosan mendengarkan cerita itu? Ayo, pasti kalian belum mau tidur kan? Enggak bu, kami janji deh akan tidur setelah ibu cerita. Kami enggak bosan kok mendengarkan cerita itu. Pokoknya kami ingin tahu semua yang ibu dan kakek ingat. Iya, iya. Baiklah, sekarang dengarkan ya. Beberapa tahun yang lalu, ketika Yesus kembali dari Gerasa, saat itu banyak orang berdesak-desakan untuk menemuinya. Nah, di antara mereka ada seorang kepala rumah ibadah yang bernama Yairus. Dia datang dan bersujud di kaki Yesus. Lalu ia memohon kepada Yesus. Tolonglah, putriku satu-satunya sakit dan sekarang hampir mati. Aku mohon, datanglah ke rumahku, sembuhkanlah dia supaya anakku jangan mati. Lalu pergilah Yesus bersama Yairus menuju rumahnya. Tetapi di tengah perjalanan, Datanglah seseorang dari rumah Yairus dan berkata, Putrimu sudah mati, sudah terlambat. Kenapa harus merepotkan guru lagi? Tetapi ternyata sesuatu yang luar biasa terjadi. Yesus tidak peduli dengan apa yang mereka katakan. Dan ia berkata kepada Yairus Janganlah takut percayalah saja maka putrimu akan sembuh So this is amazing stories I'll give you a little spoiler but Jairus daughter does survive in the end uh, probably that's not a spoiler to you but uh, as an addition amazing stories it, it tries to tell bible stories from a little bit of a new angle and for example in this story the mother at the beginning you might you maybe would guess She actually turns out to be Jairus' daughter herself, and the grandfather there in the corner is, is Jairus. So most of the videos take this kind of angle, new angle, of someone who witnessed the story or was involved in the story, telling it to someone uh, later from this uh, quote-unquote new angle. So this is 20 animated Bible stories, 10 Old Testament, 10 New Testament, about five to 10 minutes in length each. Um, we uh, created it originally in Bahasa Indonesian, and it was animated in Indonesia. It's being finalized right now. It's very, very close to, to being finished. Um, so it was also developed with a Muslim audience in, in mind, uh, you know, not showing Jesus' face, being part of that, uh, mostly using uh, head coverings for women and other elements uh, such as those. Uh, but we are now working on getting it launched in, uh, in English, at least the launching the recording in, in English so that we can create a good template for many uh, more languages in the future that our 23 international teams will be involved in producing and perhaps through other uh, partnerships with those that might be interested in, in working with us in that way. Um, it's definitely designed so it can be used uh, in social media to reach young families. As our president Mike Shragi likes to say, we're taking kind of a McDonald's approach to attract the kids and get into the, the parents' pocketbooks. But for us, it's not the pocketbooks, it's really the, the hearts and trying to reach the, the, the whole family through the, uh, through the project. So uh, you can definitely see a little bit more and some more videos, this video in full. 
uh, at kisaajaib.com. I'll put that in the uh, chat here in just a, just a moment. But that's amazing stories in uh, Indonesian, kisaajaib.com, if, you, if you'd like to learn more. Or just reach out to us at GNPI, at gnpi.org. So. Okay, the crucifixion is uh, from TWR Motion. This is a series of 20 episodes that are short biblical episodes. And so this one is now in modern standard Arabic. سبق وأخبر يسوع تلاميذه من قبل أنه يجب أن يتعذب ويموت لكنه سيقوم من بين الأموات في اليوم الثالث وفي عيد الفصح وهو يتعشى معهم قال لهم إن واحدا منهم سيخونه ويسلمه للموت في تلك الليلة بالذات فانزعجوا وابتدأوا يتساءلون فيما بينهم ترى من منهم سيفعل ذلك لم يفهموا من كلامه وقتها أن يهوذا هو المقصود بعد العشاء ذهب يسوع مع تلاميذه إلى جبل الزيتون ليصلوا وفجأة جاء يهوذا متقدما جمعا من الناس مسلحين بسيوف وعصي أرسلهم الشيوخ ورئيس الكهنة تقدم يهوذا من يسوع وقبله وكانت هذه علامة على تسليمه فقبضوا عليه وأخذوه إلى مجلس شيوخ الشعب كي يحاكموه بتهم ملفقة ويقتلوه التفت رئيس الكهنة إلى يسوع وسأله هل أنت ابن الله؟ فأجابه يسوع أنت قلت فشق رئيس الكهنة ثيابه وصرخ قد جد يستحق الموت uh, Do we have anyone here from TWR Motion today? I don't think that they were able to make it Okay, this is uh, Ruth from the Women of the Bible series by International Media Ministries. Ruth lost everything. Her husband died, leaving her with no children, no home, no role in society, worthless in her time and culture. The choices she did make changed her life and eventually the whole world. With no children who would eventually provide for them, widows like Ruth, her mother-in-law Naomi, and her sister-in-law Orpah in this time and place were worthless by human standards. Ruth listened as Naomi begged the young women to go back to their families, as she intended to go back to her homeland. Naomi had migrated to Moab with a husband and sons to avoid a famine. Now, years later, she had no one left. She knew she had no future to offer them and that her people discouraged marriage with foreigners and would look down on them. She told her daughters-in-law to remain in their own land, to go to their mother's homes. They resisted the idea, but finally Orpah turned back. insisted on continuing with Naomi to a land she had never seen, to a people she did not know. She gave Naomi the only thing she had, herself. Ruth insisted that she had chosen to follow Naomi's God. Don't urge me to go back. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. May nothing but death separate us. So um, this is part of our series, Women of the Bible, The Line of Jesus, and it is made up of four episodes. Each episode covers a different story. So there are the stories of Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba, and, and they cover lots of themes that are still relevant today, um, refugee experience, civil war, um, political abuse, and um, honor-shame culture. 
So right now we have all four episodes in full length versions, which are about an hour long and um, in 10 minute like digest versions that are available in English and Farsi. And we're working on translating them into Egyptian Arabic. But um, yeah, we're still working on translation and distribution, but we wanna get them out to as many women as possible all over the world. This is uh, a new series that uh, just came out called Live What You Believe, and Sharin will be representing this after we watch this one minute trailer. An overwhelming majority of people worldwide identify with the religious faith, 84%, and that figure is still growing. Freedom of belief is a right that we're all born with. It's a fundamental right because it goes to the core of who we are, how we live, and how we speak. But freedom of religion or belief protects the individual, not religion. And this can be a pathway to women's empowerment. Freedom of religion or belief allows for a woman to choose what she believes in and how she can live her life according to those beliefs. Cultivating freedom of belief and conscience unleashes creativity and innovation, which is needed more than ever in our increasingly global world. Thanks so much. It's an honor to be here. And I'm Shereen Tabor with Empower Women Media, which is a division of the Visual Story Network. And we have a long history going back to working with the Jesus Film and crew. So hello again to Melissa and Carol Conkey and several of our partners. Uh, we began this initiative because we saw there was a huge gender gap in that um, I had been working in the Middle East for several years. And I would attend conferences and viewings like this. And oftentimes women's projects were not included or, um, you know, men would have access to funding or they would write the scripts and hand the, the scripts over to the women. And we just saw a need for a change. I know this is not true across all organizations, but the organizations I was relating to, especially in the Middle East, there was a huge gender gap. And so we um, pulled together, raised the resources and pulled together a network of women who wanted to produce uh, their stories, their faith stories. And that's how our network was birthed. Most recently, we've been doing quite a bit of research and seeing that um, there's also a huge gender gap in religious freedom that women oftentimes within their faith communities, including Christian communities, um, don't have all of their rights to be able to express their faith. Um, and so especially in the Muslim world, you know, we're dealing with issues like child marriage or polygamy or honor shame issues or just women not being able to even explore um, spiritual things outside of their community. And so we felt like um, we wanted to go upstream and um, focus on cultivating an environment of religious freedom so that women could explore their faith questions without fear or backlash. So we're advocating that when we look at ministry, we should have a four-pronged approach, which is cultivating religious freedom, evangelism, discipleship, and church planting. And if we're not doing work and tilling the soil and promoting religious freedom, we feel like a lot of people are just too afraid to even explore. And so, you know, the Jesus film is a great tool, but if people are afraid to watch or engage or discuss because they think they don't have the, the right or the capacity, then we're losing those people. So we've created these film series to educate people that they have universal human rights to, to choose their faith, or to leave that faith community and to explore outside of um, what they know and what their family or their governments have told them. So it's pretty bold. As I said, we're, swim we're swimming upstream ahead to till the soil and get it ready um, for others who are coming with a more of a direct evangelistic approach. So the Live What You Believe series is uh, four short films. It's an online course. It takes about 60 minutes. You watch four short films. They're like three or four minutes each. There are worksheets. And at the end, you get a certificate of com completion, which shows that you now understand what religious freedom is. And you can represent it in your workplace, on campus, um, for your NGO. And you now have the talking points to be able to articulate why people have the freedom to choose their own faith or no faith at all, which oftentimes we're finding this new generation, they're nuns. 
you know, they're not, they're not, they don't want anything because they're so burned out by religious wars. And uh, the, we're finding in the Middle East that uh, over 50% of young people don't even identify as Muslim anymore. They're culturally Muslim, but they don't, they're so burned out. So we want to be there for those people, especially women who are in a place of, um, you know, just trying to figure out who they are and what their identity is and give them permission to explore. So that's the Live What You Believe series. We hope you'll check it out. Uh, it's a free online course. It's a great conversation starter, something to maybe show someone before you show them an evangelistic film and to find out where they're at. Very well done. Thank you. Can you set up the next film, Moving Mountains, for us? Yes, so in addition to the Live What You Believe series, we create a women's international film festival. We're in our fourth year and we collect women's religious freedom stories around the world. It's a library of short films from Iran, Afghanistan, Jordan, Tunisia, again, mostly uh, Muslim majority countries. And we have women expressing why religious freedom is so important. It's important for peace and security because it promotes peace rather than war. It promotes gender equality. Women have full equal rights as men. Um, and it's good for business and innovation. When this, the research shows that when a society is religiously free, there's more, there's more business. You're attracting clients. You're attracting the outside world to work with you. So we use data and research to make um, these stories um, uh, to share these stories with the public. So this film uh, is called Moving Mountains, and it's about uh, an Arab woman, an Egyptian woman who is using the platform of fitness to promote women's empowerment. Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest freestanding mountain in the world. It's the height of 13 Empire State buildings, and I'm going to climb it. My name is Mariz. I live in Egypt. I love anything related to physical activities. It's what I'm good at and my passion. But it's not common for women to be athletes in Egypt, and I wanted to change that and take a stand. Climbing Kilimanjaro has always been a dream to me, but it's more than just climbing a mountain. It's a statement to make a difference. Some of the things that we do advise people to just be aware of is that you should expect to get a headache, feel a bit nauseous, lose your appetite, you might feel a bit dizzy, but that is okay. It's so beautiful and green. It's kind of scary, we're nervous, we're uh, excited, and we cannot wait to see how it's like. In my home country, Women are labeled. We have a lot of misconceptions. I wanted to make some noise about that. Having my passion as uh, sports and running, it opened a lot of doors that I never expected. Well, in running, if you push yourself, you're gonna reach the finish line anyway. But in the mountain, if you push yourself, you could risk your life. The mountain is the one that decides either you're gonna make it or not. It's day five, it's the summit night. The, the guide gathered us and he was like, okay guys, this is the most dangerous part. At any point, if I tell anyone that you have to go down now, you have to go immediately. I was as if I was waiting for him to look at me and tell me, okay, now you have to go down because you're almost dying. I thought to my mind that I didn't come that far to go back. And then I made it. My message is for everyone who has felt pushed to the edge. We can no longer turn a blind eye to the hardships that individuals endure, whether women, minorities, the displaced, or disabled. Uh, no matter how high the mountain is or no matter how hard the situation is, they can conquer that uh, mountain in life. Believe me, if you give people the opportunity to be successful, they will. So, what dream will you dare to overcome?
my colleague Karen Shank um, produced this film for our film festival, and I went, wanted her briefly to explain how she produced it remotely. So, Karen, are you there? Yes, sure. I am. Hi. Okay. Good, good morning, at least that is morning here for us. Um, yeah, when we uh, had the opportunity to tell Marie's story, uh, Sh Shireen introduced us and uh, we were like, how in the world are we gonna do this? And uh, now we're so um, versed in doing remote work because obviously that's what we do with COVID. That wasn't really how we operated even such a short time ago. And so um, we had a conversation with her, we did it through Zoom and um, kind of came up with the idea of a story. Our team wrote the script, she had sent us some notes and then we put it together, worked with Shireen and her team. And just, so when that was all done, um, we began the journey of actually putting the story together. And so we came up with the idea of building a set in our offices in our studio with the desk and, and all of those pieces and then injecting through animated fe features, putting her story in. Um, we did need to film her and actually capture her. And so we had a, a very interesting way of doing that. We actually filmed her through Zoom uh, remotely. She was in a studio and um, on the other side of the world and we're, you know, we're filming that. And then we took the story and the audio and, um, but we ran into some serious issues as she was trying to get the footage to us. Um, she had had it trying to upload for three days and it, nothing was, had been moved. And so finally I said to her, how big is the file? And she said, well, it could fit on a flash drive. And I'm like, are you kidding? Um, let's just courier it to us. And so she did, she couriered it to us and it was taking a while. Finally it arrives and we were like, what? The package is here. And we opened, we grabbed it and it had a big cut mark in it and there was nothing in the bag. It was empty. The flash drive was gone. So the, the, the UPS driver was driving away and somebody who's trying to catch this person and phone them and they're just gone. And so we're like, oh my gosh. So we did a, we put in a, a what do you call it? A message to try to find this, the lost and found. And literally three days later, some person walked in from their, their, the delivery system and literally just brought us it a flash drive that does not happen <laughs> anyway here we had this little flash drive and we were we were back at it and so we built the whole video and we, we've crafted it together but um for myself personally the story of that we can make a difference that whatever the barriers are and and i loved the line where she talks about um that if you kind of step out and you're pushing yourself too hard the mountain can kill you and I, I think that's also true in real life that as much as we step out in faith and we take adventure, we still need to be very calculated in our approach and we need to be careful and, and know of the adversities around us that can get can destruct us. Um, but we step forward in faith and we, we go and make a difference. And when we step out like that, um, we can actually impact humanity in a really great way. And so um, very much anyone that knows me personally, that's my philosophy in life is, is that story. And it was really beautiful to be able to tell it from somebody that was so far away and to do it in a way that was really powerful. And so thank you for choosing our film to be featured. That, that means a lot. You think these things are done and put away and it's just beautiful to be able to see it back on the table and, and to be able to share that with people. So thank you so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Karen. Um, and I think this was a great example of, of a travel piece, but also something inspirational about something that's more on the heart level. And I think this kind of thing is a great example of what others can do too. So that's yeah. one of the things, aside from the adventure aspect, which I also love, I love climbing mountains too. So like, yes, that's the one. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Sure. So let's uh, head on to the next film. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are now into the testimonial category, which I sort of made up because it seemed like the right thing because we have two selections from Faith Comes by Hearing. One is called The Dream and the other is called Secret Church before we get onto another dream um, story from someone else. So we will head to The Dream by Faith Comes by Hearing. My name is Ahmad. I'm from Syria. A long time ago, terror tore me from my home, from my family. I escaped to Jordan and I found safety. But 
most importantly, I found hope. Today, I want to tell you about a dream. A dream that changed my life. Where I came from, life was very hard. I have seen war. And many people suffering. I lost my father. My brother. There were nights that I would lie awake, feeling hopeless and afraid. But one night, I had a dream. Someone spoke to me. The next day at school, I overheard some of the other kids talking about a dream that they had. The same dream about a man named Jesus speaking to them. We wondered, who is this man? Jesus. And why did he speak to us? On the same day, we heard that a follower of this man, Jesus, would be visiting close by. We were all very curious. There was an excitement, a hunger to learn. My name is Amar, and this is the story about a dream. A dream about a man named Jesus. The Son of God who came to save the world and give hope to the hopeless. When we arrived, they told us about the Bible, the words of Jesus recorded in our language. I had a dream in which the Son of God spoke to me. He spoke my language. Because of this, I have hope. And we'll move on to the next one, Secret Church, also from the same producer. My name is Sarah, and this is my story. It's a story that could end with my life being lost, but it is a story that seeks to escape the secret shadows in my heart and burst into the light. I live in a remote village, but most of my family lives in the city. When my husband works, I often visit them. There was a particular rickshaw driver who would often take me, and over time we became friends. He told me that he was a Christian. One day, my husband entrusted me with a large sum of money, but I misplaced it. I was terrified of what he would do when he found out. I went to the city to think, and on the way there, I was shaking. My friend noticed, so I told him what had happened and what he said surprised me. He did not tell me to run or lie to my husband. He said, lift your heart to God and pray. He told me that God loves me. That day I prayed to God for the first time. I asked for his help and for his forgiveness. Miraculously, I found the money. I told my friend the good news and that I want to learn more about God. He offered me a Bible, but I knew what would happen if my husband found it so I did not take it. Then he handed me a small black device, an audio Bible, a way to hear the Word of God without anyone knowing. I hesitated, but when I put the small buds into my ear, the most beautiful words began to play. Words about Jesus and His love for me. Now I know that no matter what I face, Jesus is with me. Though my life may be in danger, He will never leave me nor forsake me. That gives me comfort, and I can continue to hear the truth in secret. Um, if you want to know more about that, you can email Joshi. Uh, he can check 
and find you the right information. Um, you can email filmpreview at emdcon.org. So we'll move on to the next one. And this is called Brahim's Dream. Salam. أنا اسمي إبراهيم كان عيش في جنوب المغرب من اللي دست من سنين شفت واحد البرنامج في تلفازة كيدوبي على يسوع المسيح ومن بعد مدة مشيت قلبت في الانترنت ولقيت بلي الرب كيحب جميع الناس وقريب لهم داك شي علاش طلبتو باش يبين لي الحق وفعلا بان لي يسوع المسيح في المنام وقال لي بلي هو الحق والطريق والحياة اللي أنا كان قلب عليهم هادي ماشي شي قصة غريبة كاينين بزاف ديال القصص بحال هادو في التوراة والزابور والانجيل سمع شنو وقع لواحد الراجل سميتو شاول قبل الفين سنة وكان شاول باقي مغدد على التلام ديال الرب وكيهدد باش يقتلهم ومشى لعند رئيس رجال الدين وطلب منه يعطيه رسائل يديهم لديور الصلاة في دمشق باش ياخد الاذن ويشد الرجال والعيالات اللي غيلقاهم تابعين هاد الطريق ويجيبهم كتفين لاورشليم ومن اللي كان غادي في الطريق وقرب لدمشق لما حداه على غفله ضو من السماء هو يطيح الارض وسمع صوت كيقول ليه شاول شاول علاش كتعدى عليا وجاوب شاول شكون انت اسيدي وهو يقول ليه انا يسوع اللي انت كتعدى عليه نوض ودخل المدينه وتم غادي تعرف اشنو خاصك دير والرجال اللي كانوا مسافرين مع شاول بقاو واقفين ما كيتكلموش كيسمعوا الصوت ولكن ما كيشوفوا حتى واحد ملي داز شاول من داكشي قرر يتبع يسوع المسيح بحال نيت انا حيت قررت نتبع طريق المسيح من بعد داك الحلم اللي شفت في المنام دخلت الانترنت وتعرفت على مؤمنين بحالي في المغرب ودابا حنا كنتجمعوا كل سيمانة باش نشجعوا بعضياتنا على الايمان ونتشاركوا كلام الرب الا كنتي انت ولا انت كتقلب على الحق طلب الرب غادي يسمع لك ويستجب الدعاء ديالك والا شفتي انت ولا انت المسيح في المنام او لا بغيتي تعرف عليه اكثر صفت لنا رساله في فيسبوك ميسنجر او لا تواصل معنا على البريد الالكتروني السلام عليكم so uh, we uh, first made this little movie um, just realizing that a lot of people had had uh, dreams and uh, we wanted to have something that we could spread through social media so we are um, spreading this through facebook pages and um, other outlets i also made it uh, so that it would be easy to dub So uh, we can localize it very easily through um, the inclusion of like uh, local uh, traditional script, you know, in the little cartoon. Uh, we can also, the first scene that you see with the traditional shoes, you can um, change it to something which is uh, very specific to your area so that it would talk to people. Um, we find that, you know, having a young guy from behind like this, it could be anywhere really in the Muslim world. So uh, that, that's one of the advantages. So we've uh, dubbed it already in um, two other dialects in Morocco. We've done uh, Kurdish as well, uh, working on um, two or three other versions. So yeah, if you're interested, just contact me. It's a big part of uh, what I'm excited about, about right now. So as long as you translate the script, send me audio files, then I'll put it all together for you. Um, yeah, there you go. Right. Uh, so in this category, we have Vision 2033 from Faith Comes by Hearing. And we do have somebody here to talk about that one. And then after that, we've got Find Jesus in the Frame, frame by SIM in Kenya. Untold Chapters and A Third of Us by Ablaze Media, based in the Philippines, I believe. He made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. Having determined allotted periods and boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God. And perhaps feel their way toward Him and find Him. 
yet he is not far from each one of us. Earth's population numbers in the billions and continues to grow. There are over 7,000 languages spoken around the world. 70% of all humanity live in oral communities and 50% cannot read at a functional level. Christ tells us that his gospel will be proclaimed throughout the entire world as a testimony to all nations before the end. But how? Alone, the monumental task of delivering God's word in the heart language of every people group on earth would not be possible. But we are not alone. Faith Comes by Hearing has partnered with the worldwide translation community in a movement to finish the task and ensure that everyone on earth has access to God's word in a format they can understand by the year 2033. We're committed to doing our part by recording scripture and creating listening programs for oral communities around the world. After two millennia, in an unprecedented time of unity within the body of Christ, we can finally see the Great Commission fulfilled in our generation. This movement cannot be stopped, and there is an opportunity for each one of us to be a part of it. This is it, the final sprint. Join the movement. Vision 2033. Wow, Joshi, can you uh, give us a little bit of background on this? Hi. Uh, yeah, since um, Lori left for another meeting, I'm just filling in for her today. Yeah, I don't have to explain much about the Vision 2033 because like I see many familiar faces with translation organization. Many of the translation organizations have already embraced every tribe, every nation's Vision 2033. So Faith Comes by Hearing has come alongside the worldwide translation community to ensure that everyone on earth has God's word in a format that they can understand. So our goal is to work in partnership to see that the word of God is recorded and freely provided in every language that needs by the year 2033. So what does uh, the Vision 23 fulfillment looks for us? So we need a New Testament recorded in the heart language of 99% of the people in the world and at least a portion of scripture recorded for the remaining 1% of people in their heart language. Also, we require at least one gospel film in the heart language of everyone in the world. And along with that, all the audio and video scriptures should be freely available to every person on earth. So that's the Vision 2033 goals that we have embraced. So if you have some questions, like you could just email us or I'm free to answer those. Thank you. Uh, this is Find Jesus in the Frame, and it's a promotional piece for creatives to join a specific media team in Kenya with SIM. Let me ask you a question. Where is Jesus in this frame? What about this one? It's not always easy to spot him. To be honest, we at Sim Stories don't always spot him. And we're communicators, journalists, and media people. We don't always spot that he was there, behind it all, moving. And that's our work, to look at the world and pick him out. His fingerprints, a subtle breeze which wasn't just a breeze, a flickering flame that's something more. We don't always see it, and a good story passes us by. Let's try that again. Where do you see Jesus in the frame? At Sim Stories, we have opportunities around the globe for communicators who share this passion to find Jesus. Help us find Jesus in the frame. Hi everyone, hope you're doing all right. Um, yes, my name's Tim. 
and um, I'm part of SIM. I, I wonder um, if you remember your calling. Um, I'm a storyteller with SIM, and I remember the moment uh, when I sat in my London-based magazine, um, and God said clearly to me, go tell stories that matter. And I, and I knew what he meant. He meant stories that were about him and stories that would change um, lives. Now, I, I do that with SIM. And um, I, I put some links to the organization in there if you'd like more details. Um, well, I moved to Kenya in 2015. And after some time serving by myself, uh, we've actually over years built a small team, which is now um, we have um, four full-time missionaries and we collaborate with um, East African storytellers as well. Um, I, um, uh, we have um, filmmakers, photographers and writers as well. And I coordinate the team. Um, we have a, within SIM's own mission and vision, we have our own sort of storytellers, mission and vision, um, tell stories that matter because they point to Christ, they speak to the heart and they challenge perceptions. And our vision for changed lives is to encourage and strengthen, inspire the global church to engage in mission, um, that the spiritual and practical needs of this our subjects and the stories are met and that we ourselves as storytellers are transformed by God's story. And uh, we believe as storytellers to get to the heart of the story, we need to be committed to the region. So each of us has, has been in East Africa, in Kenya, uh, in South Sudan and Ethiopia. And um, yes, sorry about this. My little ones as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so th that's where we're based. Uh, and the story and the video that we showed really just shares a little bit of our heart as storytellers. Um, and um, I know SIM is looking to recruit more guys like us, more storytellers uh, in different regions around the world, West Africa, um, Southeast Asia, Latin America. Um, so I've, I've shared some contact details in there. But I really uh, just want to encourage you uh, to remember your calling, your why, remember your why in what you're doing and i hope that li the little video that we shared uh, encourages you in that thank, thank you. you tim and even though it's great to see you it's better to see your kids thank you for being with your children i miss seeing I kids face to face <laughs> and it's it's wonderful ruben, you that we can hi. see into your home hi guys that's, that's ruben and mackie uh, hey ruben and mackie oh well, I'm introducing my wrong child. I've got another one. This is Beatrice. <laughs> That's what I am. Yeah, I've got a third one somewhere else. You're anyway. the dad. That's okay. It's forgivable. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thanks for putting in your chat, too. And we'll move on to the next, uh, next show. This is Untold Chapters from Ablaze Media. We're going to have two selections of theirs today. How many languages or dialects can you speak? Did you know that there are over 7,000 languages that are spoken or signed around the world? But the Bible has only been translated into 690 languages, with about 1,500 languages having only the New Testament. Is the Bible translated into a language that you can understand? Good for you! But over 1.5 billion people have yet to read the Bible in their own language. That's more people than the entire continent of Africa. Do you have the Bible in multiple languages or dialects that you speak? Over 3,900 languages do not yet have even a single portion of scripture. They are still in darkness waiting for hope. You may ask, but the Bible is in English. Why don't we teach them English that they may read it? There's no language that talks to people like their mother tongue talks to them. How would you like to go and learn German so that you could read the German Bible? You wouldn't have much motivation for it. It's really a, a fallacy to think that we're going to be able to teach people English so they can read the Bible. They're going to have to have more motivation to learn English than just to read the Bible. 
Have the Bible transformed your life? Would you care to see other people's lives be transformed as well? Would you be an instrument to get His Word to those waiting in darkness? Come, talk to us. We can help you get started. Every beat of our heart, yearning for true hope, something to hold on to as we journey through life, a way out of meaningless existence, an answer cries, endless wars and insignificance. I yearned, hoped that maybe Maybe there is another way. Cities, villages, provinces, nations, not even one to show us the way. I've searched everywhere, far and wide, and yet still waiting. Is anyone ever coming for us? Or are we the forgotten? In the face of danger, loneliness, and pain, we are ready to answer our King's command with a single, all-embracing, all-transforming passion to bring the love of Christ to lands forgotten. Friends, family, a chance for a stable life, and yet, for the Kingdom's cause, we left them. Culture, language, my way of life, I forsake. A strange and distant culture, I embrace. Our King left heaven that we may have hope. Our homeland we left that others may live. Drawing on every remaining ounce of strength from Him, carrying the cross that they may know Him and the power of His resurrection. Our soul worn out. Our numbers filled. Will you join our ranks in raising the banner of hope? Will you stand with us? So, in a Blaze Media production, we are actually quite new. We started in 2019 to do media production, so it's only about like barely two years old. We started to do media mobilizations as we saw there are many good evangelistic videos, uh, many gospel films, but there are not many uh, available missions mobilization videos or recruitment videos to challenge the believers to take part in the Great Commission. So when we started Ablaze Media Production, we are seeking to provide uh, media services to missionaries, sending bodies or mission organizations to make videos uh, specifically for the purpose of uh, workers' recruitment missions awareness or missions education for churches. So we hope that in order to uh, challenge more of the younger generation, the next generation, the young professionals to take part in the Great Commission, want to produce uh, missions mobilization recruitment videos. So that's what we do in, uh, in Ablaze Media Productions. Wonderful, thank you. And I specifically chose those ones because I thought it's really a rare thing to find something that is a promotional just specifically to do Bible translation, and it's not specific to one specific group. So you could take that kind of a thing and then maybe put your information at the end of, hey, we're one of those groups that is trying to then take the gospel through scriptures to an unreached place. Uh, or, yes. yep. yeah, that kind of an idea. So, yep. so it's actually, like a white if label. If, if anyone wants those videos, they could just get in touch with me. Then I will be able to send it without our logos at the end. So they could put their information there. So we are a mobilization movement. We do not send. So those people who are interested to be translators, we actually direct them to Weekly Philippines. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you to your team too for the good work. All right. We are into the live action category, just two this time. And then the book from Create International, which is focused on Mongolia.
хэрвээ залуухан Монгол бүсгүй миний амьдралд энэ бүхэн тохиолдоогүй бол хин нэгний амьдралд цаагал тохиолдох байсан байх. Хилээр цаагалагдаж тусгаарлагдсан ч яс өндөс нэгтэй их нутаг руу ба эхлэн сатны луга зорж явна гэхээс хэдэн шүн наарч хөрөхгүй тогтолж байлаа. Хөжөхө мэ балан уучлаа. Чи одоо юу гэдэг юм бэ? Чи угасаал хужааш тий. Одоо та нар оюутны анчлаа ингээд уугарч юмчихээр бичиж өгөөд хам бол багш нар ойлгогч. Кирилл хурдан уншиж бичээ сурна мэдэв. Учир нь намаг явахаас өмнө ээж маань зөндөөл юм захис сургаж хүний газар болгоомжтой сэрэмжтэй явахыг ялангуяа хүүгүүдээс хол байхыг дахин дахин захих үед As you can see, we had a pretty amazing trip to Mongolia not so long ago. I, um, I've watched that trailer so many times and I'm still looking at it and feeling the feelings of, uh, of the experience of being there and knowing that this film is very close to being released. The story really centers around uh, two young women who've come from Inner Mongolia, which is in China. They've crossed the border into Mongolia proper uh, to go to a university in Ulaanbaatar and they experience uh, some racism while they're there. And so it's a little bit of a story of, uh, of uh, racism and some romance and some gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ all thrown together. And uh, Lord willing, we'll have that released um, in a matter of a few months now. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the Mongolian version is, is essentially done, but it's a movie that, in addition to the scenes, has a narration from the main character. And so we're in the process of now going back and redubbing in the uh, Inner Mongolian dialect, which is not that different from Mongolian, but different enough we wanted to honor that and make that happen. All this to say, this is just one of many films that we here at Create International have been making over the years. That's probably a ministry name that's familiar to many of you. Um, we love to partner with people around the world to help you make evangelistic films for your unreached people groups that you love and come alongside you and help you with that. Uh, we have been, uh, my, my team, there's, there's like 10 Create teams around the world and the, the team that I'm leading today is an amazing group of individuals and our effort uh, not only has brought us this movie, of, which is the trailer that you've seen, but we've also been taking our Frontier Filmmaking Seminar, which we've been doing live and in person all these many years, but with the pandemic we've now uh, also been creating an online version of it that only just went live earlier this week. I don't even know what day it is anymore. We've been working so hard on this, but um, we now have online filmmaking training that's really specific to people who want to make evangelistic media for unreached people groups. That's, that's kind of our niche. There you go. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Tim. I think I've been to every one of your uh, mini film, mini previews for the many people or whatever and i'm and i'm grateful to you for hosting it you get a virtual lollipop ah Thank thanks you. <laughs> all right and we've got just two more i believe and uh so these are the next one is called choices from jim and sarah meyer and they just finished this in dutch although we're going to watch the english version so you can see how this could be used in a possible social media campaign <laughs> choices Life is full of choices. Who you become in life is ultimately determined by the little choices you make every day. What you reach for today 
changes your tomorrow and alters the color of your future. A changed life doesn't happen by accident. It's your decision. Reach for it. Jim and Sarah, well done. And thanks for sending that in yesterday. Uh, tell us what's your thought behind this. Um, <clears throat> this was actually originally, we were approached by a ministry from the Netherlands that, and asked us for a YouTube ad that could send people to their evangelistic website. And they want to market people in the community that uh, would never go to a Christian website. So they wanted something that was more generic um, that was interesting, but they're going to be watching YouTube and this is an interruption in their viewing. And so it's got to be catchy, interesting, short, uh, and, and yet have truth in it. So um, it was just a fun little thing that we put together for them as an ad. And uh, we are going to be able to make it available to anyone else since these YouTube markets are really small niches typically. So the idea is um, it's a nonverbal production basically with a voiceover. Uh, so, you know, we could make this available to any other ministries that if they're interested to do this as a YouTube ad for their website, uh, we would make it available to them. All they have to do is translate the little script, um, pay for the voiceover, which would probably be recorded on Fiverr or something like that and then uh, give us a logo and, and translate the titles at the end. So um, it's almost done. The music isn't quite done yet. Um, and so that's the beginning actually of a larger series of short films that we want to make, nonverbal short films uh, called Carpe Amor. And we'll be filming our first narrative five minute uh, issues. So they're going to be issued um, shorts that deal with modern struggles that people deal with and how the Bible would answer them. And, um, but it's gonna be nonverbal. So hopefully it'll cross all kinds of cultures. So, um, so we'll be filming something later this summer uh, for that. But anyway, this is the entrance into that. So if anyone is interested, I can put in the chat here, um, you can contact us at info at gemstone-media.com and discuss with us, um, or you can send an email to my wife at sarah.meyer at gemstonemedia.org. We're actually talking uh, media to movements people. We, we are discussing the idea of having regular meetups through Zoom of people that are doing social media campaigns, looking for films, shorts, those kinds of things, and then film producers who can then try to make those things or collate and work together. So if you're interested in that, email me, tim at expatmediapro.com and we can keep you on the in the loop about that. All right, let's head on to the last film. Uh, I just learned about um, pilgrimage films yesterday because I hopped in at the min minute at the mic yesterday. So it was fun to uh, to learn about this production company based in Taiwan, who are focused on youth and cross cultural uh, explanation, I guess you could say. So how did everyone end up deciding it'd be a great idea to hang out in graveyards? Why rabbits? Why eggs? Should you trust surprise stew? This year, Qingming, or Tomb Sweeping Day, for those of us who speak the Zhongwen, is happening on the same day as Easter. And since this doesn't normally happen, we thought we need to take advantage of this auspicious moment. So today, we're gonna to cover the origin of Qingming and the origin of Easter. Let's get to story time. Story time with Jake. So Qingming goes back around 2,500 years, which is basically one metric Babylonian exile of time, or perhaps Assyrian even. Around 665 BC, there was a pious man named J. Zitwe and a prince who had been banished to exile. This is a pretty Disney story already, right? Or is it? 
It's really important to note that both Christian and non-Christian families practice Qingming, but they do it differently, with Christians usually refraining from much of the religious worship aspects of it and those traditions. But like in America, where you might go visit a family grave, there's a respect and an honoring and remembering your ancestors that you can do without worshiping them. It's that time where we compare and contrast. It's compare and contrast time. Oh, hi. Well, it's that time again, everybody. It's Easter. Easter is the most important holiday in Christianity, and it celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, so we started pilgrimage films because serving in Taiwan, we find most people don't understand something like uh, Taiwanese folk religion. So we would often see a really hard hitting video where there's people at a temple and you have this emotional punch, but you don't actually understand what's behind it and you can't evangelize to those people groups. And there's a lot of challenges with that. So uh, we decided to create a platform, hopefully, for students and families to kind of understand what missionary life is like, what missionary work is actually all about. And so it's a, a long-term plan, but the first step is this year we're going to be producing 52 videos. So we started in December and we've already done 20, uh, and trying out different film styles to build a audience. And so what you saw was one of our uh, largest forms we've done, which is a compare and contrast. So we take something like Taiwanese folk religion, and we explain maybe the history behind something or a, the reasons behind a religious belief. But then instead of leaving it there, we go and contrast it with Christianity. And we talk about how Christians would feel about the subject and what the Bible talks about with that. And we use that as a conversation starter to engage uh, people groups and be able to um, have the Taiwanese understand where Christians are coming from. And uh, we actually find a lot of Christian Taiwanese are being educated on the religion around them and being able to use this to actually understand uh, what's going on. So our, our first nine videos are actually focused on understanding idol worship and how using that you can understand the Taiwanese folk religious system and uh, understand the gospel through that. So um, we're really excited and we are hoping to also expand out into other forms of content as well, like blogs, missionary life lessons, and eventually, long-term, maybe even uh, long-form documentaries and uh, those types of things. So. Well done. I, I think humor is so underrated in missions films, and we must be on the same, same wavelength. I know that that <laughs> style of humor doesn't cross to everybody, but uh, I really enjoyed it, and I, I love seeing something that's specifically focused on people, like young people especially, uh, that would get this kind of YouTube style and everything. So it's great to see new styles coming into this genre of missions filmmaking. Um, so guys, we made it. So you guys all get lollipops virtually and be watching your mail for that. Um, and I just want to say something and uh, let me pray over all of us before we get out of here. Um, so if you close your eyes, that's fine. If you don't, I'm not going to look, okay? But I'm going to close my eyes. Lord Jesus, thank you for all of the creativity that you have put in this virtual space, um, in the physical real bodies that we are here sitting planted to our chair in our offices, in our homes, and in many places around the world, God. It is so exciting to be part of this creative community where you are using our creativity and our art uh, to be able to share the gospel message, um, or share about cultures and peoples and things that can lead to better understanding, to more love of our common human people that are our neighbors. Um, and God, we wanna glorify you in all of this. So I commission all of you as filmmakers and as people looking for films to use this to glorify God in Jesus' name, amen.